It's the greatest podcast in the history of the world. Mira comes charging out. Oh. This is enormous oh. from Dave. Oh. And uh, yeah, well, that, that's, well, yeah, there you go. I'll give you the uh, headset here, sir, if you want to come up and join us. All thanks to Mequicare, a proud partner of the VAFA. He runs around. He goes that's for goal. Oh! <laughs> what a goal from Tilly! This is for the love of the game. Now you keep at it, mate. Keep at it. There's a job for you somewhere. The umpire's just given away a free kick, so hopefully this breaks up the game a bit. Here's your host, Joey Pignataro. Turn the mic on. Hello, everyone, and welcome to For the Love of the Game, the official podcast of the Ammos. We've only got one round left in William Buck Premier, and it has come down to the wire when it goes to the top four battle. And the relegation zone from Premier B down. We are into the first week of finals in the divisions. We're up to grand finals and the women's is going gangbusters as well with some Premier's award. I can't wait to unpack it all this week with two of my great friends, Jason Bennett. Hello, Jace. Hello, Joseph. Great to see you. You always wonder where I'm going when yeah, I say uh, that, doesn't he? Great to see you, Jace. Oh, first of all, can I ask you how your voice is? Uh, you only did eight games on the weekend. All good. No, <laughs> loved it. It was great. A uh, bit of AFLW, a bit of VFL finals. It was fantastic. Which... Leads me to where I'm going off the top of the show. I, I think today. I can tell. Is this First got to do with the portraiture that we saw on the way into the hello studio? Hello to Patty oh. Grinlay. Good hello, to see you hello, again. Joey. Good Finish to see you. signing your autographs out at Fitzroy well, on the weekend. St- well, you, you haven't got your pin on. So st- what pin? Oh, Channel 7 pin, about. the new statue that's <laughs> yes. being built downstairs yes. in the foyer at 7 of Joe Pignataro. Congratulations, Joey, making your debut this week on 7 VFL. Now, yes. now Patty, the- I, said to, I said to Joey before last week's show, Joey, I need to talk to you. And he looked at me with a sort of a look I, of, yeah. wow, this sounds serious. I said, I need to ask you a question. He's like, oh, okay. He said, well, we've got some Bernards in the final round. It's our SEN <laughs> game and you're down to do that. He goes, yep, yep, can't wait. I said, what if the opportunity came up to call 7 VFL next week because I, I, I'm in Sydney, I can't do it. Or the St. Bernards game. Have you ever seen a bloke as tormented and torn in two? So in the end, he's doing the the, uh, (laughs) seven VFL game, which is fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you. Lovely to make your debut and call a semi-final on seven on Saturday, which everyone's very excited for. But I do get the feeling, Paddy, you'll be at at the snowfields. I do get the feeling you'll hear the squeal of tyres and a car sort of sliding in sideways, Ace Ventura style, (laughs) just after (laughs) halftime, after he he hightails it from Geelong. Well, I was talking about this with our excellent VFL producer, Rachel, about how are we going to get... Dr. Pignataro. Police escort. Over, yeah, that, well, that was the thing. So this is... <laughs> seven News Chopper. But this is the benefit of working for, for Channel 7. And Jace knows this himself. I've seen him take the chopper, getting to Werribee to the MCG when he has to double call and just sort of waves his hand out the window and off comes the News Chopper. So, Joey, I Peter think... Peter Hudson style, you land out on the ground. <laughs> yeah, so a few, a few notes for you, um, Joey. Is just You, you want to make sure that you always tip the chopper driver or chopper always. flyer afterwards. Okay, or else, um, that's good to know. What's his name? A bit late. Uh, Gav. So, Gav? Yeah, Gav's yeah. been in the business for a long time. So... Um, <laughs> I am looking forward to seeing either police. I think Chopper 2 police escort makes the most sense. You don't want to be landing on the snowfields themselves. We can land on Oval 2. I'm thinking, yeah, maybe Oval 2. The back one? It is a bit, it's a bit hilly in Essendon, so you will have to resolve those issues, but that will come with time. Just jump out of the chopper and land on the ground. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. How are you feeling about it? Uh, Honestly, I'm I'm blown away, to be honest, initially, because it's not something I had on my radar as much as I do the VFL most weekends on afl.com.au. We know that... We know, being the commentators on the streams, that once it gets to this point of the year, you and I just do your best work on Channel 7. So I just reserve myself to the end of the ammo season, which I can't wait for as well. But to, for you to ask me last week and then to have it all confirmed is a very humbling experience. And as I said, uh, as much as I have dreamed about doing something like this, it's totally out of the blue. You're very much deserving of it, and it's going to be very interesting. I'm going to be listening to the second half of that uh, VFL game because I'm tipping <laughs> Pignataro will somehow have the SEN feed of your call in one ear while he's calling the other game. He'll find a way to make it well, work. Speaking of St Bernard's, special guest coming up today on the show. Oh, Matt Soro. Can't oh, yeah. wait to chat to him, the superstar Ruckman of the Snowfields. I believe this was called four <laughs> weeks ago by the men down there that, that yeah, keen to get Matt in the airwaves. I think they were on the cans when they put them I'm, the I'm interested to see what he's got to offer actually in the podcasting space. I am a little bit concerned though for our boundary rider on Saturday afternoon because I Ma- feel like Maxie. I might be crossing down to Maxi and Back and then, page, Maxi, Maxi had sock well, you, you, you might have ripped off his headphones and you're just sitting sidelines after I, halftime of the VFL game. You're that keen. 
Do well, if, if I chance? do come down, I won't be standing with Maxi. No, I'll, I'll come and sit next oh, to yeah, you. Yeah, you'll be coming with the rocks, yeah. No, I'm names sure. on the honour Will you still be wearing the, the suit and pen? Yes, I, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> oh, remember, God. remember where the name is. <laughs> we'll work our way down oh. to St Bernard's. We'll do that. We'll, we'll finish with the relegation race in a moment. Yes. But let's talk Premier Men's and let's talk the top of the table start. Let's run through the results. Yeah, so over the weekend, Old Brighton locked up a minor premiership. Congratulations to the footy club. 19-point winners in the end over the old Zavarians, which we unpacked a little bit in mm-hmm. the post-game and we'll do it again. Today on For the Love of the Game, the University Blues uh, assured of staying in William Buck Premier by 25 points over the old Melburnians, leaving them as the first of two sides that will go down to Premier B in 2025. We mentioned St. Kevin's have beaten St. Bernard's by 18 points and now it makes it a very interesting game at the Snake Pit on Saturday. Collegian, somewhat of a shock. Uh, result yeah, this mm, to definitely. Old Scotch. We'll unpack that in a moment. That's a massive shock, isn't Seven it? Seven point winners. Well, again, we'll unpack that in a moment. And where we were, Jace, Brunswick Street Over was absolutely rocking Whew. because Fitzroy is still alive in William Buck Premier beyond this weekend coming 16 point winners over the University Blacks. So what's your headline from the weekend? My headline is down at the bottom end of the table. Fitzroy, this third win in a row makes it very interesting when we go to the University Blacks, St. Bernard's and themselves going into the final game because of course, the finals will play itself out, and I know fourth spot is well and truly open on the back of Collegians winning and the Zaverians losing, but down the bottom end of the table, this fascinates me. So let's start at the top. As you mentioned, Old Brighton are safe. They're 10 points clear with one game to go, so they will finish top. Wonderful performance from the Tunners. Very well deserved. They've been the pace setters all year. St. Kevin's and Old Scotch still battling it out for that double chance and second spot, so makes a massive difference in this competition whether you finish second or third. If you finish mm. second, you get that double chance in the first week. If you finish third, you're in a cutthroat final, so Right now, as it stands, St. Kevin's by two points over Old Scotch. So, Scob are the Masters, their own destiny here. But in the final round, they have to play Old Brighton, mm-hmm. the top team in the competition. Old Scotch will play Old Zabs, who are fifth and fighting to try and get into the finals. So, a little bit like, and we'll talk about Premier C in a moment, the team that's sitting third mm-hmm. at the moment is in the box seat because the top two teams play each other. One of them, presumably, is going to lose. If that happens to be St. Kevin's, and um, and Old Scotch can um, yeah. come well, over the top. Well, well, the one difference here is, as opposed to Premier C, is the Old Zavarians are fighting for their own finals life, are. so they have to win and bank on Collegians dropping their game against Fitzroy, who have to win to stay up. Yeah, that's yeah. right. So at the moment, um, the top three are, are set. They're all safe in terms of where they are going to play finals, Old Brighton, St. Kevin's, Old Scotch. So the only remaining battle in the finals race is Collegians and Old Zabs. Now, Collegians, because they had that wonderful win over the weekend, have kicked a game clear, but they're behind on percentage over Old Zabs. So in the final round, Collegians will host Fitzroy at Harry Trot, and Old Zabs, as I mentioned, just have to play Old Scotch. It's such an interesting narrative here. I think these two losses to Collegians for Old Scotch could cost them a top two position because we saw them, I mentioned this last week on the podcast, that they'd played a good game of footy, kicked themselves out of it the first time of asking. It does appear it's happened on the second time of asking as well. Seven goals, 16 points. They kicked two goals, six to one goal straight in the final quarter. Eight scoring shots to one to go down by seven points to the Zavs. So, uh, to Collegians rather. So, if you look at this Scotch team list as well, we were talking about their depth at halftime at Brunswick Street Oval, Joey. It, go through it again if you like. Yeah, well, let's do it because it, this is a really strong team and it does appear that this is a bit of a loss for me at least looking at it on paper. It seems significantly out of the box. This is a massive blow, Jace, because yeah. at halftime of our game I did say that they are in the box seat on the back of 13 years of data that I've collated to win this year's premiership. You've got your premiership window. Because they are ranked first and second for defence and attack, which is the profile of 12 of 13 premiers. The only team that hasn't done that is the Old Zavarians in 2016, where they won the flag from fourth, and they beat Old Trinity on a very wet day at Icon Park. But Scotch had the profile, and at halftime, we're looking at it, and Collegia were a couple of points up. But this is what I did say, that their players that they have available because the VFL, for these guys who are aligned with VFL clubs, are not playing. Sam Grant, Harry Stubbings, Alex Noblet, Rhys Galvin, Henry Brown, who returned for his first game since round 11, and Harry Scott, who plays at Richmond in the twos on the weekend, Jack Polkinghorne, Mackenzie Allen, Charlie Jackson and Robbie Beckworth. Like the depth is there. Mm-hmm. James Tarrant came back into the side. Reese Galvin, as I mentioned, has played a couple of games now. Like there's no real chinks in the armour. The only thing that is an issue is kicking in front of goal. 7-16 on the weekend. That game is completely different if it's 16-7. Yeah, that's it's definitely a blown opportunity. The upside for old Scotch is 
They are still good enough to come from the first semi final, the mm. cutthroat. They are still good enough. I mean, they've proven it to themselves and to everyone else in the last couple of weeks. So, in the first week, they'll have to play the Collegians. Let's assume they finish third. They'll play Collegians, and they may not. They may actually be able to jump over. You know, you would think. I feel like oh, they're going to finish second. Yeah, you would think Old Brighton will beat St. Kevin's. You would think, but who knows? Um, but they're good enough to beat. All those other teams, whoever it is that finishes in the top four around them, they're good enough to beat them. Like, it's just whether or not, as you said, they take their opportunities on the day. I think let's flip it, though, to think about what the odds of Arians could do next week because we've seen them, the Zavs, bring players back into the squad and perform at an exceptionally high level, right? That 99-point win over Uni Blues, chief in that. They're not going to have it their own way at Campbell Sports Ground. Like, this is going to be, I'm pretty confident, the best odds of Arians 22 that they can put on the park, possibly, because it is the finals yep. equation. Yeah, they it's have, an elimination final they for must, them. They must win, yep. so they're going to play their best 22. So, well, well, looking at their team on the weekend, yes, sorry to just cut yeah, off, Paddy, yeah, it was go. pretty damn strong, though. Yeah. In the point of, there are the names that we've come to learn and expect this year. Dan Hanabry, Dennis Simeopoulos, who we talked about, Campbell Lane back from the VFL. I'm not sure how many more players they're adding to this lineup. the Elds of Arians. Well, here's what Dan Donati told me after the game. He said, look, it was hotly contested, skilled, considering the super tough windy conditions in Brighton. We got outplayed in the first half. They used the win really well in the first quarter and their pressure and work around the contest early gave them the ascendancy. It was always going to be difficult trailing by 40 points at halftime on a windy afternoon. But to our credit, the boys remained positive, kept the margin under 50 at three-quarter time, knowing we had the win in the last. Great last quarter, great second half in general, got it back under three goals, but ultimately we left ourselves with too much to do. So you look at off the back of that, mm -hmm. the positivity that old Zabs will get is, look, look, we buggered up the start of the game, didn't do a great job at all, let them get on top in those conditions. We didn't play the win very well, but we finished really strongly and to be honest, if you take that bad start out of the equation, we more than held our own against the best team in the comp at home in tough conditions. Well, it's 13 scoring shots to one in the first quarter. And to only go down by 19 points considering that start, especially against the Tunners, is pretty indicative, I think, of where this team is going. Well, did Brighton pull the handbrake and just stop in the last quarter? Given that they, they were 40-odd points up, they're on top of the table – now, that is an interesting factor going into this weekend. I don't think they'll pull players out. I think they've got to play as best as they can. The odds of variance, we got to see them at Turek Park against mm. Scotch in the first game of the year when they met against the Cardinals, and they didn't take their opportunities in the first quarter, and Scotch were able to run all over them. I wonder if it's a similar story. If they do not take their chances this week against Scotch, when they have momentum on their side, I can see the Cardinals running right here. Yeah, and the, the Cardinals side, and we did speak about this at halftime, and I don't want to go over old ground that we've covered, but... They are so balanced as well, and we've seen them be able to play games using their tools, using their smalls. They've had different looks throughout the season, but at the moment it does seem like the most settled and balanced 22. And just before we do move on, Ed Delaney, I think, has taken one of the great marks. He's pushed away Macking with an absolute screamer in this game. So if Ooh. you are on social somewhere, it's ended up, I think, on Cal Cummins' Twitter or Instagram somewhere, who does a great job of calling the community TV games. Make sure you seek that one out across the week. Yeah, I have to go and check that one out. So we'll do our tips a little bit later on. Uh, but that, so again, just to be clear, the fourth spot between Collegians and, on, and Old Zavs and second spots up for grabs yep. between St. Kevin's and Old Scotch. It's going to be a fantastic final weekend of Premier Men's. And then if we head further down the ladder, let's talk relegation race. Yes, yeah. let's. You go yeah. first, Paddy, because you were infatuated with Fitzroy on Saturday. They were excellent. Uh, this is, I, I don't want to be uh, too anti uni blacks here, but this was probably the result that we, we wanted as far as this relegation race goes, because with the 16 point win over the University Blacks, Fitzroy, they're ninth, they're on 20 points, they are 14% behind, but level with St. Bernard's. But the key element, I think, here is that they're a game and only 5% behind the University Blacks. So Old Mobilians are definitely going down. Yep. They can't get up. They're six points behind everyone else on the bottom of the table. So now becomes a race in three to avoid that other spot between Uni mm -hmm. Blacks at 24, 79.2, a game back to St. Bernard's and Fitzroy, as you mentioned, on 20. So now it comes down to those matchups in the final round. Yeah, and I'm going to cover this later on in Premier B, but this is why I'm not discounting the Blacks from this discussion because at the weekend, Bo Morris... They were some 4% clear of Caulfield Grammarians and a game. They lost to, to Old Trinity. Caulfield defeated Old Camberwell by 40 points, made up that percentage ground, made up that game gap and sent Bo Morris down to Premier C. I think there's every chance it could happen again. We've spoken in previous weeks about this Collegians-Fitzroy game. A little bit different now, though, because Collegians will want to be winning this game if they are to stay in this finals hunt, considering their percentage is worse than odds of variance. So you're going to have to see Fitzroy play at its absolute peak and remembering that they've won one game away from home this year, which was against the Old Melbournians a few weeks ago. So let's look at the matchups then. 
You've got Uni Blacks playing Uni Blues. So, which, for, the, which so for the Blacks, if they win, they're safe. Yep. Done. Yep. Which changes the dynamic because the Blues cannot move now. Yes. No. Yep. But they can play spoiler. And mm-hmm. I think well, they, they would, would like to send their arch yes. wouldn't they out what? of yep. William Buck Wouldn't Premier. they what? Is that the next best thing for them? Like It would and, be. It would be. And they're going to get some – I think they, they've got their complement of players back as well for this week, the likes of Gleeson, Stewart, Grimley. So. This is the, I mean, for both of them, in a sense, it's a grand final. But for yep. the Blues, it's a grand final. For Blacks, it's almost like an elimination final yep. in sorts. If they win, they're safe. They can still lose and still be safe, but – they would much prefer to win well, it. Well, they oh, lose yeah. to be safe. Fitzroy would need to lose to Collegians. Correct. Yep. Which is some – what of a possibility? Well, I wouldn't say it's a foregone conclusion, y- though. You would probably no. go into this game tipping Collegians on paper, but we have seen very strange results in relegation battles over the years previous, especially the, the rounds previous, the round previous in Premier B. So I would not be riding off the Roy boys and the fact that they're coming into this game with a little bit of momentum and belief. So Blacks have got a 5% uh, percentage gain over Fitzroy. So if Fitzroy were to win and Blacks were to lose, the Roys would have to make up that 5%, mm-hmm. which isn't, again, not well beyond, well inside the realms of possibility, most definitely. And then the other game is St. Bernard's versus Old Melbourneans. Mm-hmm. Now St. Bernard's will obviously start favourites in that one out at the uh, Snake Pit, mm-hmm. but there are a couple of contested charges Mm. from the game, uh, and you were right across this story on the weekend. Things got a little bit heated between St. Kevin's and St. Bernard's. Yeah, there are a few red cards handed out as well. So this will be an evolving story we're recording. We should mention on a Tuesday morning. We haven't seen these results come through yet. But, yeah, the number of red cards indicate that I, th- I think there were up to four handed out. So you would think that there will be a few players missing through suspension. Mm-hmm. Though we have seen St. Bernard's – I mean, Jackson Haitley is the key one after winning well, SNFL. He, he didn't play on the weekend. But we know that now with a few teams finishing up in the VFL that those players can come back. The question for me about the old Melburnians is, is how they're going to approach this game because they obviously – they're going down this year. But you look at the percentage that they've had, it's not sitting drastically below the likes of – Blacks and Fitzroy, which it's actually me, better than Fitzroy, exactly, which yeah. for me is indicative that this team has been really competitive. And having seen them a few times this year, their best footy is is very mm. good. They have some excellent players. They've the played Nichols patches boys. of games against yeah. the best teams in the comp yeah. and stretched them. Right. I look at this game and I think Sammy Lowby is made for these moments, right? Because he is one of the most exciting footballers in the competition. He's a dynamic small forward, and I think the ability to maybe send the snow dogs down on their home deck is a game that he would get up for. And I think a number of OM's players will be getting In up Paul for. Sadley's last game. It is. Yes. Yep. And we must the mention coach, that. Paul yes. Sadley, congratulations to him. Uh, he's stepping aside after this game. So you put all those facts together, Joey, and it makes it a nervous day for snow dogs fans because you're mm. not exactly sure are Old Melbourneans going to bring their absolute best or can you get on top of them and at some stage they yeah. run up the flag and you can belt them. So we should mention that if the Blacks, St. Bernard's and Fitzroy all lose, there is a strong chance the ladder stays as it is. Mm -hmm. If they all win, there is a strong chance the ladder stays as it is. But a variable of different factors could find that the University Blacks are in Premier B from 7th, St. Bernard's could be in Premier B from 8th, or Fitzroy could be in Premier B from 9th, which is just simply fascinating. And that's why I think it is the biggest story from the weekend, despite what's going on in the top four battle. It's uh, it's amazing how it's how Fitzroy have surged late in the season. Like that's been the story. Like, mm. At one point, most of the year, we would have said Fitzroy and, and OMs are going down. They're the two that have sort of occupied those bottom two spots for most of the season. But then Fitzroy have just come from the clouds. Um, you know, three straight wins at the back of the year, having only one two for the entire season up to that point, ticking off firsts every week, and just the confidence and the momentum and the belief you get from that becomes a powerful force. Yeah, well, let's talk about Fitzroy, because we were at Brunswick Street Oval. Joey, I believe that was your first call from the... It was, yes. I've played a few games, never, never grandstand. called a game from Brunswick Street Oval. How'd you enjoy Street it? I yeah. uh, loved it, and the fans were right up in our grill, oh, that was, quite literally, yeah. right on the table with us, yep. banging the drums and yep. smashing the floor. Smacking you in the back of the head Goodness with the flag. Goodness me. Yep. Julian a, Turner was awesome, wasn't Ju- he? Julian Turner was outstanding, which I think is just and I said for this the love of the games, Julian Turner. There we go. <laughs> if you come on the podcast, so all I'm, I'm thinking when we do catch up with Matty Soro, is, oh yes, geez, it's a He's good week. On the line, it's a good week to come onto the podcast, Joey. He certainly is, and uh, we'll get to him in a moment. But we also just have to mention Heath Ramshaw's performance. Oh yeah, from the first bounce was enormous. Yeah, yeah skins player of the game. Yes, yeah, excellent day from Heath. Well, before we move over to Premier B, Paddy, uh, as I said, Matty Soro was hanging on the line, and he has been good enough to join us on for the love of the game, the ruck out at the mighty St Bernard's. Hello, Matthew. 
Hey, Joey. Thanks, Shane, for having me. Talk to us about the weekend just gone, Matty. Unfortunately, a loss to St. Kevin's means we go into the final round, as we were just talking about before you jumped on, in a state of vulnerability against the old Melbourneians this weekend. Yeah, look, it was an interesting game. Obviously, uh, start of the game pretty hot, and we, we got out to a bit of a lead, and then uh, we knew St. Kevin's would come and just probably gave them some momentum in that second quarter. Um and, yeah, and they're obviously really strong in defence, so we, we couldn't really break them open in the second half and get the scores we wanted. But, yeah, it's come down to the final day, which we didn't plan. We saw this fixture, obviously, all year, and we didn't plan for this to happen. But hopefully, for our sake, we can go out and, yeah, stay in A grade, and it's our grand final. So, yeah, we have to put in a good performance to do that. So, so you have circled it around the club. Does that sort of sprinkle through the week as well? I'm always interested about how these, how clubs approach these battles, whether you pretend it's not happening or you build it up for weeks. What's it actually like being in one of these relegation battles for your year? Yeah, look, as I said, we didn't plan for this to happen. Um, but now the reality is, I mean, you're not going to shy away from it. We obviously know we're in this situation now and, um, you know, it's been a challenging year, but we've had some great performance and, performances and taking it up to some good teams so um look plan will be the same as it has every week we don't change much but um obviously the mindset is definitely changes um in the sense how how big this game is so uh yeah there'll obviously be that extra pressure and nerves but hopefully we can just get it done Matty, talk, talk to us about the team's evolution throughout the season how are you a better footy team now at round 18 than you were in round one yeah, look, I think um, coming into the year, obviously, 18-0 and 0 last year, you, you probably don't get the challenges um, and you don't have to search for as many different scenarios. We were pretty repetitive last year, but I guess this year, round one, we started with a, a good win and then we had that, you know, we didn't win for a while in the middle of the year, so we had to keep changing um, and trying to find different solutions around that. A lot of injuries, so testing new players in different positions and I felt like the group's been really resilient and some guys, uh, yeah, have been playing each week, um, you know, obviously with troubles with their body, but I think, yeah, there's been a lot of spirit and character shown in this last month especially and I think the win against Xavier showed that and the performance on the weekend where we took it up to the top four side again. So um, it's been a journey, but it's good to be uh, in this position to get a crack at it. What's it like being coached by Steve Alessio, Matty? Yeah, it's good. Um, he, uh, yeah, obviously came in last year and uh, had a plan and, you know, he he was pretty clear on what he wanted from us and he gives us a lot of freedom with that. So, um, yeah, but I think it's just a confidence he gives to his players. I mean, for me personally, he's done that um, all year last year and this year. So, um, yeah, he, he keeps it pretty simple. He doesn't want to keep make it too complicated for us. So... Um, and, yeah, he really relies on us players as well to, you know, give him the feedback and and he allows us to do that. So, yeah, it's, it's been good. When you talk about yourself a little bit, um, you're consistently across the board as far as rucks go and the sort of top three in the competition with, with Billy Coates, who you came up against on the weekend, and Alex Spralia out of Zavs. How's your year been? You've really developed into this, I think, this dominant ruckman in the middle who's able to win his own footy as well. But what's your footy journey been this season? Yeah, look, it was. Uh, I think there was some great ruckmen in B grade last year, so I, I pretty much had a good test last year to, to be ready for this year. And, um, yeah, as you said, obviously, Coates and Spalia over the past couple of weeks have been really challenging. But I think, yeah, for me, I've definitely yeah, became a better player off, uh, off last year and Sess has really helped that. So, yeah, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's, a, challenging, it's a challenge each week to keep going again. Um, but... You know, I've played every game, so that was the main goal at the start of the year and, yeah, looking to finish on a, a good note this week. Um, but, yeah, definitely taking some learnings over the past two weeks from uh, those two that they're really good players. So, yeah. I'll tell you what he is doing right now, Jace, is being very impressive and very political in his answers, unlike Ferg McNichol who oh. <laughs> drops F-bombs when <laughs> we have fame, him yeah. on the podcast and a couple yeah. of other boys we've had on. Uh, Jace, can I ask you, while we have Matty on the line, uh, you uh, regularly learnt about Premier Data this year. How many hours a week, roughly, do you spend on Premier Data? Oh, yeah, right. I was waiting for this. A uh, couple. couple. Paddy, how many hours would you spend on Premier Data, you reckon? Oh, oh. 
two or three maybe, okay. three or four. I've been told that Matty spends every waking minute outside of work and training <laughs> on Premier Data. Is that what, true, Matthew? What are you looking for, Matthew? Look, uh, Joey, you got that wrong. It's actually inside of work. Oh. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so what uh, are you looking for? What are you looking for in those numbers? I think I'm just interested in the game and, you know, I'll sometimes have a look at my opponent and uh, I think in our position, the way I call it is you're pretty much 1v1 all day. So uh, it's pretty easy to know what you're going to come up against. But, yeah, I probably do take it a bit too far at times. But, um, yeah. Do you watch Vision as well, Matt? Uh, Yeah. I do. I'm not going to lie. That it, no, don't, 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 uh, don't be ashamed of it. Yeah, I think yeah, it's yeah. fantastic. I've been yeah, told, yeah. Jace yeah, yeah. and Maddie. I've been yeah, told yeah. that Maddie has every Thursday at home to work from home in quotation marks, and he's on Vaffa TV watching the opposition. Well, why wouldn't you be? Vaffa yeah, TV is it's outstanding. A fantastic resource. I was watching yeah, all the yeah, John's and Kevin's game on that uh, one. So you watched St Kevin's last week <laughs> in the lead up to playing St Kevin's. Uh, I, I didn't watch the whole game. I watched. Uh, <laughs> I was, I was just watching. the stoppages. <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah. I That's great. Yeah. No, I think it's fantastic. I love this. Yeah. When are you going to watch no, the old no, Melbourneians no. this week? I uh, already have, so, yeah. <laughs> 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 That's fantastic. I reckon it's wonderful. <laughs> I'm calling the game and you're better yeah, prepped yeah. than me, Matty, so I'm in real trouble. You might have to yeah, come yeah. and believe me. Yeah. Are you generally a, yeah, a no. bit of a footy nuffy, Matty? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm a I'm a blues supporter, so yeah, you know, Vaffa and AFL, I'm pretty uh pretty into it. So <laughs> yeah. no, that's fantastic. Now, um, I, I noticed with interest um, that I have your phone number, but <laughs> jo- Joey Pignataro, who's the St Bernard's team mascot, doesn't. Is there the some sort of mascot. is there some sort of friction or something here that I need to know about, Maddie? Like, is there some sort of issue? Because I would have sworn nah. that Joey had everyone nah. on speed dial. <laughs> No, there, there's nothing you need to know about. Just last year, he kept saying all year that Ferg McNichol was rucking and uh, he was actually down at full forward. So there was a bit of friction for a while, oh. but we've made it up this year. So. Is everything okay? Have you got anything yeah, you'd like joking. to say to Matt, to oh. Joseph? Well, Matt and I are both Italian no, no, stallions no, from St. Bernard, so yeah, we're on, yeah. a, we're on no, a different no, no, level, no. the two of us. But no. no, look, Ferg was the original St. Bernard's uh, person outside of myself to do for the love of the game. He was an yeah. avid listener from the football club every week regardless, and yeah. he'd regularly give me updates yeah. on how Brian Waldrum was going and how antagonistic he was. So we gave Ferg the opportunity to come on and we'd pump Ferg up as the ruckman, the fullback, the full forward. Then he started swearing and we can't yeah. have language just being thrown around willy-nilly. So we've had to find new people. <laughs> Did you catch up yeah, with Ferg, by the way, Matty, enough. that interview last year where he just made a complete ass of himself? Well, it was actually on our uh, Silly Sunday. We we're, were lying around the snake pit in the open and uh, I saw he was on the phone and he was saying your name and Josh Harriet. And I said, don't tell me that's a phone call. And he's like, yeah, it was. I don't know what I've just said. So, yeah. In the that was, you rang him a bit. Yeah, you rang him a bit later in the afternoon. So uh, we played on the Saturday, and yeah, you rang him on the Sunday, which wasn't a good idea. I think I've got I've got questions for your production standards of ringing footy players Me? halfway through their silly Sunday. Like you're asking for trouble there, Joe. Well, well, it was the day after they won their way back into A grade yes. by winning the premiership against. Yeah. Um, Maybe you, you got exactly what you were looking for. Fitzroy, can I ask you on a semi-serious note? Uh, Matty, you are one of, I think there's only about 150, 200 players at St Bernard's who are premiership players, which is an awesome achievement and something that I am very envious of because your name is now on another honour board at the footy oh, club. Not which the is same honour board no, as yours? No, different honour yeah. board. Oh, a bit further down, round the corner, different past the honor toilets. Different honour board, Matty, oh. yeah. also have his name on his number up in the change rooms, which is just fantastic. But you're able to, to celebrate yeah. that one with some of your great mates. What was the feeling like on grand final day last year? Yeah, it was unbelievable. Um, look, I think when you get relegated, you uh, you obviously want to come straight back up, but our goal was to always win the flag. And, yeah, look, it was something that a lot of us in such a young group didn't imagine we'd be premiership players at, I think, at the average age of our squad was 23. So, yeah, didn't really envision that one uh, coming so soon. And, um, yeah, look, it was, uh, yeah, still probably the best day I've lived so far. I haven't had many... Bigger highlights than that in my career. So, yeah, no, it was unbelievable to share it with a group of mostly homegrown players as well. We've all played together for a while. So, yeah, it was, it was great. Matty, what would it mean to you to stay up this weekend? Oh, I think um, 
yeah, it's it's what we want to do. You know, we went down last year and um, our goal was to always remain in Premier Division and, and you know, we've taken it up to good teams this year and we seriously think that, you know, if we can get our um, key players back, we can definitely give it a shake next year. It's such an even league, so you just want to be in it and that's the reality. So, um, yeah, we just need to stay up and that's going to be our main focus all week. Well, it is our SEN match of the day this week coming up. one forty-five on Saturday on the SEN app and vaffa.com.au. It's St Bernard's taking on Old Melburnians. Matt Sorrow, thanks so much for your time, mate. Good luck. Thanks, gents. Thanks for having me. Tickets are now on sale for one of the signature events on the Vaffa calendar, the William Buck Vaffa Finals Luncheon, Friday, September 6th at Zinc. It's always a fantastic afternoon of entertainment as we celebrate the AFL and Vaffa final series. And in 2024, we have former Essendon goal-kicking great Matthew Lloyd and Hawthorne Premiership player Campbell Brown locking horns once again to draw a line in the sand, have a few laughs, and preview the upcoming AFL final series. While Jason Bennett and Joey Pignataro will join me, Paddy Grinlay, to preview the 2024 Vaffa final series in a live episode of For the Love of the Game. So join us for a delicious lunch and plenty of laughs as we celebrate finals footy. Head to the Vaffa website to grab your tickets now. It's the William Buck Vaffa Finals Luncheon, Friday, September 6th. We'll see you there. This is For the Love of the Game, the official podcast of the Ammos. We're here all thanks to Mequacare, proud partner of the Ammos. and been around since 1959. You can check them out at mequacare.org.au. They do some great things in the community. Premier B, Paddy, we had a look at this Ooh. on Saturday night after our game at Brunswick Street over. Caulfield have survived only just. They hadn't won a game since round five, been in ninth position since round 15. They were a game and 4% four percent behind Bo Morris in eighth. And Bowie haven't been in the bottom two since the opening round of the season. And Caulfield have managed wow. to pull one out of the fire. There was the added They've element. done the old Melbourneians' great escape. Well, this is the thing. So Bo Morris are ahead by a goal in the last quarter against Trinity, against the wind. Trinity then kicked six or seven back the other way to enjoy a pretty healthy victory. Then the Caulfield-Old Camberwell game, which started at 250, so a little bit later is progress- progressing. And Old Camberwell, the key thing here, and it's probably a key lesson for Premier football as well, Old Camberwell couldn't make finals. Their year was over, and Coach Guy McKenna for Caulfield just mentioned that both teams had gear four to go to, but maybe the fielders just had the turbo button to push and the Wellers weren't quite able to reach that button on that day. They come over the top. They enjoy a 53-point victory. It's their best performance of the season, and they're going to stay in Premier B football next year, which is just a real heel turn where we can after what we considered what the year was going to look like a few weeks ago. Well, it would have been a double drop had yeah. they lost this game and gone from yep. A grade to B grade back to C grade, and it's a long climb all the way back up. So... It is a nice feather in the cap to be able to then do some recruiting in the off-season, Jason, say to players that you want to come to your club, hey, we're still in Premier B. We are a grand final away from getting back to William Buck Premier. Trying to sell that hope when you're in C grade after you've been in A grade two years earlier is a tough sell. There's a couple of Steve McQueen great escapes here, really, when you think about it. Willie CYMS looked like they were heading down for most of the season and Caulfield as well. So they've both dodged the bullet and stay up in Premier B. What about at the top end in the the race for the four? Well, yes. So the the top – so Old Halebury – Needed to have always sort of been two points clear of Dealer Cell for the last few weeks, and Dealer have lost to the Ox this weekend, which is a lot on the weekend, which is a significant result for Nathan Brown's Ox team. This is a side that hasn't played finals ever in Premier B football before. It's the highest they've ever achieved. The club's been around for seven years, and Nathan Brown really wanting to make that clear. It's been a really good year at Como Park, and we're going to talk about the um, the Premier B women's result in uh, inside the boundary during the week, but. He, he was thrilled with his team's performance. Delar just not able to quite adjust with the wind. And then we saw this in a few results across the weekend, teams struggling to fight the long way back. It's been pretty incredible. Wet and wild across the weekend. A fair bit of wind about the place as well. And yeah, this was a result where the Ogs just got started well and they've really improved, I think, their preparation and conditioning throughout the season. They're running out games so much stronger than they were to start the year. So they're going to finish fourth. Old Trinity, they'll go third with that win over Bo Morris. d will wind up in second. And we knew this was going to be the semi-final. They're going to play the Bloods in the first week. So Old Haley versus d in the second semi-final. Winner straight through to the grand final. And then the cutthroat first semi between Old Trinity and Old Geelong. And then you mentioned CYs a few moments ago. I'd like to just 
take a little bit of a, a moment to just talk about a few of the results in the relegation race and just the club approach. So we've seen some Beadsman Tone Tigers. They've known that they were going to go down for a long time to Premier C, but they've developed this really nice brand of football. They've brought a lot of young midfielders through. It's sort of the, the master splinter with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with how Josh Cowan has started the year. He's, he's brought up these kids and now they're off and running on their way, like the likes of Jake Harding and like he, he has had an outstanding year. Matt LaPalma is another one who's been really, really solid. The CYs, they have this sort of whole theme about trying to get out of that relegation race, played some great footy, but ultimately at Brindisi Street, it was the Tigers who finished their year really strongly to give their year in Premier C in 2025 a bit of a boost to start with. Yeah, something they can hang their hat on for this preseason is the way they finished off the year and didn't die trying at least to get out of there. Unfortunately, it won't be the case. Uh, Premier C, Jay, so you got something before we want to jump over to... I was just wondering whether or not Rather than do you want to keep people hanging on the tips or do you want to just go bang, bang on the two finals this week? No, hold the tips. Hold the tips. Hold tips the at tips. the end. Everyone knows where the tips go. We don't want to throw our audience out now at the back half of the year. Because yeah, they'll both be devastated. Yeah, they will be, particularly because they tell, know I'm already not going to tip I can tell who you're not tipping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they'll have to wait till the end to see if it's absolutely confirmed. Hey, uh, Premier C, before I go through the results, can you blokes just flick over to the statistics page, please? And uh, see who is number one on the goal kicking list. Who's stuck oh, at thirteen games I've, and stuck on seventy eight goals? Got, got an internet issue, mate. So I can't quite. Tell All right, you. I'll yeah. tell you. It's Mitch Brown. He's twenty two short of the ton, just like I said. Plus finals. Yeah. He's going to kick twenty two this weekend. Is he? Well, yeah. what if they win? They get another final. If they win that, they get another final. Oh, they going f- to? Right, well, well, are they going to beat Ajax this weekend? Are they going? It's to? a funny old game, football. Oh, it's, hey, it's are, are we keeping our tips till the end? We Didn't don't we do Premier C. We don't do Premier C. We do a bit differently. Patty doesn't want to speak anymore, even though so it's just you and I for the rest of the podcast, Jake. <laughs> uh, Parkdale, great effort to get to the four. I don't think uh, Mitch is going to kick 22 this weekend. There's been three clear standout yep. sides in this section. And fascinating enough on the weekend, JC, in all seriousness, the flip of Hampton Rovers to be able to finish in a double chance spot because of the top two sides played each other. Unbelievable. I'll carry at 64, 208.1. Hampton at 64, 183.3. Obviously, I'll carry beating Ajax means the Jack has jumped to third. 60, 182.0. So it's I'll carry versus Hampton. Rovers in the second semi, winner goes straight through to the grand final and it's going to be Ajax versus Parkdale for that uh, first semi-final cutthroat game, winner goes through to the prelim. Do not underestimate how big this old Carey Hampton final is when it comes to this, not only a, obviously a spot in the grand final, but promotion here. So yeah. I talked about old Kerry and we had Mitch Wolfenden on a couple of weeks ago, how they once were an A-grade club and have slipped down to C-grade. The Hampton Rovers have been notorious for getting to finals and falling over in this point of the year. It's been a oh, long time since I they just were turned the peacock turn off. <laughs> Premier B <laughs> and beyond that. So this is a huge game of footy. And so the other reason it's huge is because whenever you've got three really strong teams mm. in a competition, Think about the difference here. You win this second semi-final, you get the week off, and you're automatically through to the grand final. Mm-hmm. If you lose, not only do you have to play the next week, but you've got to play a fantastic team in the prelim final that even if you get over them, you might belt the suitcase out of each other mm-hmm. while the other team's sitting on the couch resting up ready to go. So it is a massive game this week. Yeah, huge. Enormous. Cannot wait. Who do you think is going to win? I don't know. <sighs> this We don't tend to tip, but given we're on the roll here of Premier C. Do you want, do you want both games? Yeah. Okay. I think the Rovers win. Oh, Christian wow. Carnival. Mm-hmm. And I think Ajax beat Parkdale. I tend to agree. On Ajax beating Parkdale, I think Old Kerry will win the other game. So that would mean Old Kerry go through to the grand final. The prelim becomes Ajax and Hampton Rovers. Be great to have Kerry back in Premier B next year. But they have to win first. My tip is just not going to get it done. Division 1 men's. Just before we go, the two teams to drop out of Premier C will be Monash Blues, who finished with two wins, and Oakley, who finished with one. So Oakley straight back down after coming up from Division 1 last year. In Division 1, we're into what will be preliminary final this weekend. Paran beat Parkdale. Paran beat Parkside, rather, by 60 points comfortably. And UHSVU, five-point winners over Ormond, they led by 26 points at three-quarter time before Ormond came home with a wet sail, just fell short of getting through to next week, which means our preliminary final. Jace is Parkside against UHS for a spot in the granny. Yeah, that's going to be a fantastic game, isn't it? Again, we look at the ladder in, in those ones, Parkdale, Parkside rather, on 52, UHS for you on 48. So obviously Paran, the standout in Division 1 this year, they finished three games clear of the field, then Parkside on 52, Ormond and UH. SVU on 48. We obviously saw on the weekend how close it is between those two. So that's going to be a fantastic preliminary final. Could go either way, that one. You know what's incredible? Division two. Yeah. Remember we spoke to Tom Hunter? Yeah. About Brunswick being so far ahead of the pack? 
They've lost to so, Elstonwick in the knock sorry, in the Tom. double chance final. <laughs> and Elstonwick are going to be elevated to Division One. This is an amazing story from Elstonwick. Paul Amy's written about it actually this yeah. week Has in he the really? uh, oh, in News Corp. He's followed up this story. He's been following this one for a little while now, listening to the podcast and, and just jumping on board the Elstonwick story. It is a great story because they finished two and a half games behind Brunswick. Brunswick were fifteen and three. Elstonwick 12-5-1 and then half a game back to South Melbourne in third and Whitefriars, they were both tied together on 12 wins. So, uh, yeah, Brunswick were um, cruising at one point and then Elstonwick have come home with a wet sail. And for, for the Wickers, I think it's over a three- or four-year period now. They've gone from Division 4, Division 3, Division 2. Now they'll be playing in Division 1 next year, which is – these are the things yeah. that I love about our competition is you get these opportunities to climb through the grades – some clubs it's taken a lot longer than others, but for the Wicks over the last six or seven years, they've been really building to this. I think with Brunswick, I think there'll be a few clubs that will be kicking themselves about the conditions over the weekend because I'm not quite sure if you saw how windy it was at Latrobe Uni over the weekend, but out there in Bandura, the conditions were full on. So that you think that this is another element to this time of the season. We've seen it in previous years with pretty boggy grounds, wet grounds, and, and quite rainy conditions through September. But the wind across this weekend has thrown a number of finals races and finals results completely the other way to what you'd expect. So the preliminary final in Div 2 is Brunswick versus South Melbourne Districts. Mm -hmm. Three games difference between them across the home and away season. Brunswick finished three games clear of South Melbourne Districts. Who wins that prelim? I think I've got to go for Brunswick to get back on the winners list. But it's just – it proves that it doesn't matter how far back you've finished when it comes to the top four. You're a genuine mm-hmm. – you just got to be there. Yep. You've just got to be there. And I did notice that their game, South Melbourne's, was played on a VFL track at yeah, Port Melbourne a, on the way to you. Um, so from a conditions point of view, like they couldn't have had any better no. outside of the wind. And I'm not saying Latrobe isn't up to a standard that you would expect it to be. But you get to play on a, a ground that has mm. history. It's got – nostalgia about it. They may have even just rallied on the back of that chase. Well, I think that's even the other element is that usually you'd expect finals that it's a home ground advantage. It doesn't happen. So you do just get as free of a hit as you possibly can. There's not – you've got what the advantage is from your home crowd or the crowd that travels with you. But aside from that, it's your first look at these grounds for the season, have at it. So I think that's the thing that you mustn't forget as we approach Premier Football Finals with these ground, these games being held at neutral venues. We are into what will now be the second week of the finals for the final section in Division 3. So on the weekend... Final five, yeah. Div- uh, St. John's beat Powerhouse and Canterbury beat Richmond. So as we flip the page and go over, North Brunswick will host St. John's this week. They're probably being the two front runners as we've sort of unpacked each mm. week on um, the Around the Grounds with Braden May. And Powerhouse will play Canterbury, which means Richmond... Their season came to a close on yep. the weekend, so now we're down to four in Division yeah. 3. Which is, was the top four in the competition at the end of the home and away season. So we've lost Richmond Central, they've dropped off the back there, and they were three games back from Canterbury, so there was a, a fair gap between them. Not so big a gap now between this top four, though. Mm-hmm. North Brunswick on 60, St John's on 56. Those two teams will play um, in the uh, So that game's semi. a double chance game. Yeah, is that's a double correct? chance yes. game. And then you've got Powerhouse versus Canterbury, which again both finished on 52 points. So... Um, Again, that's going to be really tight. Like what's happened throughout the year almost, as you said, in the last uh, division, it's almost irrelevant. It's just about who's in the best form at the moment. Is anyone missing any players? Anyone a little bit injured? Anyone a bit sore? Because really when you get to this point of the season, it's just about winning one, two, three games and you're done. You're there. You've won the whole thing. So it's going to be very interesting. I'm looking forward also later on the week, inside the boundary, we will dissect the premiers for the women. We'll have a chat to uh, Dean Anderson from Old Scotch and talk about the female side of things just before we uh, wrap this up and go into our Tips for the weekend, which people are hanging on to listen to. The under-19 Premier Men's, of course, you can watch those finals on community TV. The weekend just gone. Oh, yeah. Old Scotch, 15-point winners over the Uni Blues. St. Kevin's, four-point winners over Old Brighton. Kick after the siren for Old Brighton from about 35-40 out, and it just missed. Again, brutally windy conditions at Box Hill. Uh, so that was an absolute thriller of a game. Both those games were available on KTV and so will the um, preliminary final this weekend. Old Brighton on, and Old Scotch. Which... On KTV on Sunday morning. It's going to be a fantastic game, that one. I think it's fairly indicative as well that these clubs that are at the top of William Buck Premier are also at the top of the under-19s ladder, which is yes, that well, these programs are going so well. And we've spoken about this with Scotch, is that they bring those kids through, get them around in the seniors, and now they're all filing back to play in 19s finals as well. So... It would be in a really high-quality game of football. 
So just to wrap up our broadcast schedule, and you can find out all this information, of course, at vaffa.com.au. But our SEN match of the day this week is the Premier Men's Clash between St Bernard's and Old Melburnians on Saturday afternoon from 1.45. Our KTV double header on Saturday afternoon is, again, Premier Men's final round action, first versus second, Old Brighton versus St Kevin's down at Brighton Beach Oval from 11.35, the double header into the seniors. That's on Saturday afternoon. We've also got, on Saturday morning, Premier Women's first semi final. Q versus Caulfield Grammar from Box Hill City Oval from 9.15. So you can tune in 9.15 uh, Saturday morning. Go from there into the Old Brighton St. Kevin's double header. And then you've also got SEN St. Bernard's Old Melburnians off the back of that. Then Sunday morning, we mentioned that under 19's Premier game. Preliminary final, Old Brighton, Old Scotch from 9.20 into the Premier Women's second semi final. Old Scotch, Old St. Kevin's. Uh, sorry, Old St. Kevin's. Current day St. Kevin's. <laughs> <laughs> from 11.40 as well. So massive, got there. massive weekend, <laughs> two KTV streams on each day plus the SEN game. So it's great to have so much finals footy available for everyone to enjoy at this time of the year. And bloody subscribe to Community TV. It's as little as five bucks and you get to watch all of this live uninterrupted. And then you can even go back and watch the replays and obviously Braden May does some great write-ups around it. We will take a quick break and wrap up with our world-famous tips after this one for the love of the game. Any fitness, any ability, any goal with 24-7 access to over 560 clubs around Australia at Anytime Fitness, you will find your fit. Search Anytime Fitness today. Just about done for another week on For the Love of the Game. Of course, as I mentioned, Inside the Boundary later on in the week. Kate McCarthy going to join us, as well as uh, Dean Anderson from Old Scotch. Previewing the big second semi final this weekend in Premier Women's between Old Scotch and St Kevin's. Those two teams have been the standouts all year. St Kevin's won the first battle. Old Scotch won the second one just a couple of weeks ago. Who goes straight through to the grand final this weekend? We'll talk to the great Dean Anderson. And uh, you can catch up on all the others' results, that is, from the women's on vaffa.com.au. Plus, we will talk about it. But also, uh, I know you just mentioned the broadcast schedule before the break. Uh, there is a grand final this week. One grand final this weekend. So, all the best to both teams involved here. It's the Division Four women's grand final. It'll happen Sunday morning at Elston, Sunday afternoon, rather, at Elston Wick Park. And it will be St. Kevin's versus MCC in the Division Four women's grand final. So, best of luck to both teams. May the best team win. All the best. And uh, hopefully, it's not St. Kevin's because they win everything and uh, that is frustrating for everyone else in the competition. Let's go to round 18 of William Buck Premier Men's. This will determine how our ladder looks, who will be in the finals and who's going down to Premier B in 2025. Jace? First game, Collegians versus Fitzroy. Collegians win, they can wrap up fourth spot. Fitzroy win, they could potentially get themselves out of relegation. I'm Harry Trot, 2pm. I'm going for the Lions. You've got to be more specific. <laughs> well, well, actually, actually, you don't because no. the Lions are only Collegians. Yes. Fitzroy are called the Roys in, oh, am- in amateur footy. I'm going for the Roys because I can't go for Collegians. In the last game of the season, after spending Saturday with Josh Herriot, I'm on the Roys bandwagon in this last game. Okay. I'm going to be conventional and tip Collegians to win this game. So, therefore, if Collegians do so lose, got, yeah, yep. Old Scotch versus Old Zavarians, can Zabs pinch fourth back mm. from Collegians? Well, they can, but they won't. I'm going for Scotch at home. I'm going for Scotch at home too. Very hard to do. Mind you, and we did talk about this, it is conceivable, isn't it? Yes. That if Collegians get absolutely walloped and the Zavs lose by only a couple of points, the percentage factor could come into it or not? No, Collegians have got the game on, on the oh, Zavs. Oh, so, okay. Don't so, worry about that. Take that out. Yep. <laughs> the battle for top spot, Old Brighton versus St. Kevin's. I'm going for Brighton. St. Kevin's to win. St. Kevin's yeah. at Brighton Beach Oval. So they're going to play each other two weeks in a row, according mm-hmm. to you? I think so. I, I think that they've, they had a big wobble, a very significant wobble against Who? the University Blacks and Kevin's. Kevin's. I think that I, you cannot write this team off. I'm not writing them off. I, I think, just don't think they're going to win this game. I think they're going to win this game. Okay. So Joey thinks Fitzroy is going to win, which sets up St. Bernard's versus Old Melburnians out at the snowfields. Was it set up to do what? Well, if Fitzroy win, now that puts the pressure on St. Bernard's. Can the Snow Dogs win? Oh, absolutely. Will they win? Absolutely. I'll be very comfortable driving home from Geelong listening to you blokes on 1116 SEN say that St. Bernard's are 40 points up in the second quarter and then they'll go on and make it a very comfortable win from there and stay up in William Buck Premier. I tend to agree. They've been so hard to beat at home and this isn't a team that I think shirks these challenges. I think the Snow Dogs win. And the final game of the home and away season in Premier Men's is the University Derby between the Blues and the Blacks. I think the Uni Blues are going to win 
which leaves me in the way I've mm. gone with my selections, okay. having the Blacks being the team that goes down with the Old wow. Melbournians. Depending on how percentage works out with Fitzroy, but considering their uh, little percentage gap that they what need to make up. was it? 5%. 5%. 5%. Yeah. Percent. So that probably – I haven't yeah. quite done the maths on this one, but very five possible. goals either way. It's very possible. The Legions can five. somewhat put the cue in the rack too if they realise they're not going to win the game and – if Blues want to really inflict some pain on an arch rival, then go for an absolute wallop. So for you, Blacks and Old Melburnians go down. If you if your tips come I've to got fruition, Fitzroy and the Old Melburnians going down. Okay, because I think the Blues will win this game as well. Let's take it over to Premier B. So we're into the finals. We are into the finals. So it's Old Haleybury and Dela, which is the one v two battle. <laughs> It's going to be a significant well, the winner of this game. Not I'm not even going to ask you because the, I know who you're tipping. The winner of this game obviously gets into the grand final, but they earn promotion. Yes. So they'll be the first team that we know is coming up to William Buck Premier next year. And I think off the back of, if I can be serious for somewhat of a moment, on the back of the heartbreak that Old Halebury experienced to come down to Premier B by 1.6% last year, that is a burning desire for them to get back up to A grade before they worry about winning a grand final. So I think Old Halebury win this game. Yeah, last time these two teams met, it was Dela by 26 points. But I think Old Halebury come into this game a little bit hotter than Dela. So I'm going to t- tip the Bloods to and, go up to uh, Premier Box Queen. Hill obviously lost on the weekend. Uh, Andreas Stefanakis, he'll be available, won't he? Well, he may be, but there, there could be some contention over an incident on the weekend, oh, which we will be looking at over the next couple of days on the VAFA website. Okay, any d boys in contention to be looked at? Not that I'm aware okay, of. Okay, I'll make a few phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> then the first semi-final, the knockout, Old Trinity versus Old Geelong. Oh, this is a cracking oh. game. This is an absolute belter. Uh, where, has that got a fixture announced next to it? It does. Yeah, that will. I think that will be the game at... Not uh, Saturday at 2pm. That will be <laughs> at, at Trevor Barker Beach Oval, I'm pretty sure, with the Old Halebury d game at Box Hill City Oval. Correct. correct. So Old Trinity, Old Geelong, 2.40 on Sunday at Beach Oval. I might head out to I that game. I think I might get there. Yeah. I might head out to that game. I'm really looking forward to it. I'll be very interested to watch how Old Geelong go, as you said a bit earlier on. This is their first Premier B final series. There'll be a great Old Geelong crowd there too because their reserves team play yep. Old Ivanhoe yep. immediately before it. So it's a double header for Old Geelong. I'd be highly encouraging anyone who's free on Sunday to go out and watch this game. Yep. Footy. I it think, will be a belter. I think I'll be there as well. I'm going to go with Old Trinity just because I think their level of football historically has just been that half step above of Old Geelong. I'm a big fan of the you have to lose one to win one. And I think that's probably the case with this Ogs team. They've had a magnificent year. Um, I think a lot of what this year will ultimately be about is building this team to a real premiership contender in years to come. I too am going for Old Trinity in that game on Sunday. That wraps us up for For the Love of the Game this week, lads. Beautiful. The next time we'll be hearing from you, you'll be in a suit with a little pin on. Well, I've got to inside the boundary first. So we've got to talk that's about true. That's comp. true. Are you going to do that with the suit on, though? Well, this is. Can I ask yet? you this? Can I just ask you this? Because we, we uh, we'll I'll get my some tailors, I think. I'll have my production meeting later on the week. But am I on camera or not? Oh, look, I'd hope not. <laughs> because <laughs> if I'm not, then do I even get the pin? <laughs> What's you, the point? If, if, you, well, you it's a bit like the baggy this. green, mate. We'll have to have a, a ceremony <laughs> sure, before the presenting? game, and you get it presented to you <laughs> on your lapel, the seven pin. I, I'm wondering who, who would, ta- I think JB might make his way And what day down. and time does the article on vaffa.com.au go out about the well, journey we, to get here? We do, we do have some um, There's just, There he is. <laughs> <laughs> He's giving him one. He's <laughs> <laughs> got two. Do you just take a little box of those around with you? You, you would be surprised how often oh, no. Campbell – actually, you wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. On the weekend, I turned up to do the VFL game and I said to Brownie, hey, mate, you got, you got our suits, right? He goes – Oh, no, they're back at my apartment. Yeah. Like, in all seriousness. Oh, I'm not surprised. So Meg, our wonderful production assistant, had to jump in the car, race over to Brownie's penthouse apartment, <laughs> oh, pick Meg. up our suits and come racing back. Fortunately, we weren't on camera till half time. Oh, that's so good. it yeah, worked you... out okay. But, yeah, of course, I don't know why I thought about leaving my suit with Brownie. That's there's, there's a bit crazy. Of, there's a bit of Tom Liberatore leaving your footy boots at home on the morning of the grand final mm. about Campbell Brown. Yeah, I, don't, I actually don't think I've seen him in pants or shoes this year. No, very rarely I wears either. To which I think is a same. pretty complex then, discussion if we open that one up. I'll also have to uh, ask our great friend Nat Edwards, who's going to be hosting yes. the launch, the grand, uh, finals launch later this week for her box if I've got to do anything on camera so I can at least look somewhat the same height as the rest of my... might talk to Kate McCarthy about that one after talking W with Ben Brown yesterday. There was a good foot and a half in height difference. I look forward to also reading about uh, this journey of mine on vaffer.com.au later in the week too, Jason. We'll get the biographer over your way. We are done. We'll see you next week. Fade him down. I think we're done about six minutes. Fade him down.